is the president trying to ram it down everyone's throat? Joining me, UC Berkeley economics professor Brad DeLong, along with Trump economics advisor Steve Moore, joining by phone. Steve, I'll start with you. Um, you know, you've always been a free trade guy. Mm -hmm. But you also find fault with this Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership deal. Uh, what is your big concern? Well, why does it, I'll, I'll ask you this question. Why does a free trade deal require thousands and thousands of pages of regulations and, and mandates and rules? And, and you read through just even parts of that uh, TPP draft, and it's, it's incomprehensible. And I, I believe that what we've, we've sort of bastardized the whole idea of free trade with so many regulations, labor regulations, environmental regulations. And you look through it, and you wonder, who is this really in the interest of? I'm not... I'm not convinced, Trish, that this is in the interest of American businesses or American workers. Well, you know, i got to tell you, Steve, a, a lot of American voters are with you on that one, and it's the reason why you see both candidates trying to back away from this. Brad DeLong, uh, she was out there uh, campaigning for TPP. She says just effectively doing the president's bidding, uh, but now she's backed off it considerably. You're a, a proponent of this oh, deal, I as I understand. Uh, Brad, can you hear me? Brad DeLong, yep, if he's with us, you you've been a proponent of this deal. Why do you like it? Um, well, first, let me say if I ever had any illusions that Steve Moore had any economic principles whatsoever, <laughs> rather than to serve the interests of whatever oh. politicians Gosh, or what is it with Republican all these Party is currently that throwing out. They today. are Steve, now gone. On? They are now completely and totally <laughs> right. gone. Second, uh, the insults CPP aside, is tell us why you like it. Um, well, I don't. I'm kind of on the fence about it. It's a very good deal for American companies. It's a wonderful thing for the center-right establishment Republican part of the American coalition because it does an awful lot to protect American intellectual property in the mm -hmm. greater Pacific Basin. Mm -hmm. It makes it much harder for other companies to copy what our companies are doing and so eat into their markets and erode their profits. That's good. As far as its effect on American workers, it's a nothing burger. Um, Vietnam will sell a very few additional goods to the United States as a result, mm -hmm. but will employ a few more people in Walmart as a result. All right. Um, the losers you, you, will be Bangladesh I, I, okay. that isn't inside it, and I, the I big wanna, winners are going in. to be the center-right Republican. And stop you there, Brad. Yeah. On, on, on you say it's really nothing in terms of what it's going to mean. It's a total wash for American workers. Uh, you know, a, a lot of American workers hear that, and they get a little bit nervous. Steve, you think about NAFTA, which was sold as a, as a benefit for American workers, not just a wash, but a benefit. And yet, uh, when you look at the numbers, roughly 700,000 American jobs were lost uh, shortly thereafter with NAFTA. So you can understand and sympathize, I would imagine, with how American voters feel about this one. Well, look, I think I actually think NAFTA was a, it was uh, for the most part a success. It certainly has, has helped uh, the economy of uh, of Mexico, and that's important for America for security reasons. And we don't we don't want uh, Mexico to turn into another Venezuela. Um, I think on balance, NAFTA has been a, a positive thing. Uh, and look, I agree with Brad that. It's really important if we're going to have these trade deals with Asia, Asian nations, that they protect our patent rights mm -hmm. and our intellectual property rights. Where I disagree with them is I don't think this agreement does that. And I don't think any of these trade deals have done that. We know that these countries are stealing our, our um, intellectual property. It's it, Some estimates $200 billion a year that is owed to the United States mm -hmm. that's stolen by these other countries. It's one of the reasons I'm very wary of this deal. All right. So you want to see a little bit more. Brad, back to you for a second. You said you weren't totally sold on this stolen. deal. What are the um, problems stolen. with it? That word stolen. Poor countries always copy the intellectual property of rich countries to the extent we can. Back in the 19th century, we stole all of Charles Dickens's books and <laughs> published them in New York without giving him a cent in royalties, making him very unhappy for a great deal of his life. The TPP puts many more restrictions on intellectual property appropriation, which is what the lawyers politely call it, than we have now. Is there anything I'm you don't like in the deal? I'm glad to see that Steve Brad, Moore has not forgotten. Brad, 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 the problem is they never has not forgotten that he they was in favor of them. NAFTA. I, I am in favor of um, NAFTA. So, hold on. so your problem was first that it was a bad deal because it was too long, when the length creates standards that we can take action on. Um, your problem second is they won't enforce it. When if we don't have a deal at all, there won't be anything to enforce. 
Um, as I said, you're right. incoherent. You used to have libertarian okay. economic I, I, I'm gonna, principles. I'm going to end it there. You know, because, you know, I, what I'm in favor of is a, I don't favor these large multilateral deals. I think we should have bilateral mm -hmm. free, free trade deals with countries that will right. honor, the, honor the deals. Right. We're going to get out there nice down. and clean. Steve and Brad, yeah. thank you so much. We can only take so many insults. <laughs>